All right, welcome everybody to October 26. This is the Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. Uh, if you've been on the call before, you already know this, but for those of you who haven't, uh, two things that we have to abide by. The first is the antitrust policy. Uh, so there are many people on this call from different organizations, so we must not participate in any activities that are prohibited under any of the antitrust and competition laws across the world. And the second thing that we have to abide by is our code of conduct, uh, which is linked in the agenda. Basically be respectful of others' ideas and opinions and uh, thoughtful in your communication. For announcements today, we have the standard Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. Uh, so if you do have something that you would like to include in that newsletter, please do leave uh, a comment on the link that is in the agenda uh, and include whatever information you have. The second item that we have on the announcement is the TOC um, nomination period has started. It does end on October 31st at the end of day Pacific time. We currently have five folks who have nominated themselves. If you are interested in nominating yourself, please do um, uh, add an issue there to the um, GitHub repository. There's information in the link that's in the agenda that tells you how to go about doing that. The next announcement that we have is that we have uh, a workshop on atomic cross-ledger transactions between Hyperledger Besu and Corda Ledgers using Hyperledger Cacti version two. That happens on November 16th. And if you are interested in joining that or participating in that, please do click on the link there in the agenda and register for that. The next announcement, I don't know who added that. So uh, please. That would, that would be okay. me. Uh, so some of you may have noticed that uh, you got a lot of issues assigned to you recently. This is a uh, widespread uh, CVE that crosses almost all of our projects. Um, as you can see, uh, you know, it's, this needs to be fixed. Uh, I created dependable bot alerts, as you can see, for a lot of these, not every single one of them. Uh, so if you go to your repo uh, and check security, you should see that you have a few uh, depend about alerts having to do with having to do with this. Please fix this. And if you're working on Fabric Chain Code Node, please fix all these critical issues as well. <laughs> anyway, just to notice, I didn't go through and click every button to alert everybody because I got some feedback that people didn't appreciate getting 50 alerts from GitHub. So uh, please take care of that. What What is the um... Vulnerability? Is there any, can you give a brief overview of it? Well, just reading this, it says it's vulnerable to arbitrary code execution, ar arbitrary code execution. When you, uh, that's about 99% of the vulnerabilities I read say exactly that. I just, I just wondered if you had any, why you highlighted this one in particular? Uh, because it was so widespread, uh, across all of our projects. Um, uh, okay. It, it seems like so many repos use Babel. Um, okay. that, and it's basically, it's so widespread and that that's basically it. Okay, thanks. I, I also have a question. I mean, right, do you know that, uh, I, I mean, the fix offered by uh, Dependabot, is it uh, safe to just apply or do we have to check? I have had, I, I've been burned before where I just said, oh, okay, just apply, apply, so, you know, merge the, and, and then it broke stuff. So I was like, oh, shit, we have to reverse that. I, I think I looked at it and it was like one of the 86% or something like that. So not 100%, but reasonably high, if I remember correctly. I mean, I look at a lot of these and I tend to balance between, you know, that's about the type that I actually take a look. Oh, there you go, 94%. I take a look 
I, I'm sorry, I run through the code like the demos as as a test versus um, just merging it. A lot depends on whether our tests all run. Of course, if the tests don't run, that would that's just a given. You don't, but yeah, that's. And Ryan, do you have any insights in particular for this case? Well, I would just do as Stephen said, you know, yeah, run the yeah. test. Um, I haven't checked all 300 of our repos. <laughs> I'm surprised. What have you been doing during the night? <laughs> Trying to sleep. <laughs> all right, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Ryan. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make today? No, okay. Uh, so for quarterly reports, we do have the Caliper report that came in last week. Um, I think we may still be waiting on some um, comments there. Um, well, actually, it looks like Arun, you may be the only one. Uh, I haven't seen Timo do any um, reviews recently. so. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, when the two weeks goes by, we'll be able to merge this one. Um, and then for Sawtooth, we did get that one in this week. Uh, it was due today. And uh, we do have some folks who have already approved it. So if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet, please do go ahead and have a look at that. But any questions on either the Caliper or the Sawtooth report at this point? Okay, well, we don't have any upcoming reports due next week. I think the next ones are due sometime in early November. Uh, and Stephen, just for your reference, they are the Aries and D and non-creds ones. Um, so I think that's like the, I don't know, the ninth or 10th or something like that, whatever the, the Thursday is of that. Oh, thanks, Ray, uh, the ninth. Um, I have been duly notified. <laughs> no worries. Um, just giving you some advanced warning there. I know it probably takes yeah. a while to, to put those together. So, um, no, no rush on uh, that because it's obviously a couple weeks out, but, uh, just wanted to let you know. And then I don't know that anybody from Aroha is here, but if they do listen to the recording, uh, it looked like theirs was on that list as well. If, if I could ask, um, Stephen, uh, a question, um, I originally had these lumped together to make it easier. Is this harder? Would you rather do? Oh no, do it's fine. Split those out. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Okay. It's all good. Okay. Uh, so for discussion today, uh, thank you, Stephen, for letting me know that we were supposed to continue the documentation task force update. Um, I did miss that last week, so uh, we do have that on the agenda, and then we also have. Uh, the badging lifecycle task force, which was due to report out today as well. So I guess with that, Bobby, I will hand it off to you. If you're the right one to take this off board. I believe I am. Thank you so okay. much. So let me share my screen. I have to apologize. My computer has been acting funny. This may or may not go well. <laughs> We're just going to have to see. So for our recommendations, we decided to um, actually show them to you um, instead of uh, just talk about them. So hopefully you're seeing my screen. Yep, we can see a screen. Okay, so this is an environment. Um, it's a metaverse environment. It's a private metaverse environment that my company leases. I create events for people for learning um, experiences. Um, so this is the uh, space I've set up for the Hyperledger library. Um, that is one of our recommendations. Um, so this is the space um, I just want to, if you have ever attended a Ledger Academy event and have downloaded Ledger Academy's hub uh, and have the Agora software already on your computer, you can join me in this space using the code HF. L for Hyperledger Foundation Library. So if you have Agora or if you want to go to agoravr.world and download it and enter the room, Hyperledger Foundation Library with the initials HFL, you can join me here. And if you do, I encourage you to come over to here 
and click so that we know where in the world you're coming from. So I'm in Princeton, New Jersey. So you see, I just tagged myself. So hopefully by the end of this demo, there'll be a lot of different people having tagged themselves up. Oh, there's Depore. Thank you. She's going to come in and tag herself too. Again, we're all different avatars. I'll show you with a selfie what mine looks like. So this is me. Uh, so if you come into here, you'll see me walking around with my Agora hat on. So basically we set this up. We're going to just go real quick. This is the directory of what's inside the library. Um, and then a little mention as to uh, one of my favorite Hyperledger marketing things is a collaborative duocracy because it, again, Hyperledger is all about doing stuff, not just sitting there and watching. Um, so we're going to come in here and in a bit, minute, we're going to go over these Hyperledger uh, task force recommendations. But I just wanted to uh, go over real quick and let you know where the information. So there's two parts we're recommending. One part is the existing Hyperledger documentation. And that's what we showed you last week. And we're just going to show you where that stuff is stored. And then the other is our overall uh, AI included documentation. Um, and we're going to go through that uh, today too. So yes, our last week we went over the GitHub templates. Um, so they're right here. Our recommendations were that there's token and badging as you move through the life cycle. Uh, user guides for the maintainers so that they know exactly with uh, checklists what they need to do at which stage and dashboards to show them exactly what's going on. The next was the repos and I do have a lot of feedback on this. Um, I do have a section upstairs for the, in the maintainers lounge where we're going to talk about what everyone's using. I was attempting to do a pie chart but I never got finished. Um, and have a discussion with some uh, feedback on uh, which of these to use. Um, and I'll show you that. We did show you some AI tools. So there's links. If you click here, you will open uh, Whimsical. Um, and here's another link to the Gamma product we showed you. Moving along, we did the templates. Uh, here is a link to, or actually inside the creation station, there's a link to all these templates. Um, and then we showed you Jambot using the Figma tool, and there's a link for that as well. We also recommended uh, dashboards depending on who your users are, and we'll show you where they come in in a minute. And then the creation station, what do you want to build today? So basically, if you want to recap the presentation from last week, it's all right here. Um, but now let's talk real quickly about our overall recommendations. So obviously we're recommending a library that's there 24 seven globally accessible to the world. Here it is, enjoy it. All you have to do is download the code. Um, it is available through uh, websites. Um, it's on the Ledger Academy website. It is not working. I have to talk to the people over at Agora World so that you would just be able to go to a, a website and jump right into this environment. We do strongly recommend, um, and I'll show you where the checklists come in. Checklists for everybody, because again, one of the feedback we got from, again, I'm going to throw Nico in here from Firefly, was that when he was moving through the life cycle, he didn't know what the next steps were. So we want to be able to make that kind of experience for maintainers and community uh, contributors easy so they know what they have to do and not have to search for what they have to do so they can just get into doing it. Um, also the content creation hub, which I'm going to show you, um, right now, I might as well show you that right now. So in here is if you want to create documents. And again, this is just beta. We're working on getting this rock solid. You would come in here and you would go to, uh, what do you want to start building? Do you want to start building, uh, with AI or do you have an outline? Either way, um, here's another AI tech link to chat GBT4 where you take your outline or your idea and you ask it to be improved or ask, what am I missing? Uh, what do you think uh, could improve this outline? So many ways you can use chat GBT to improve on any type of thing that you're doing. And then again, once you have that outline, you know, you can use the other products, the AI tools highlighted on the outside wall, Gamma or Whimsical to further enhance your presentations. Um, oh, hi, Tripor. 
um, come over to here and we have uh, what you want to build today. You can click on um, any of these or you will be able to click on any of these and get into uh, that information. There's a clickable link here to get you to all of the templates, whether they're white paper templates, use cases, so that if you want to create any of these things in the community, the outline or the or the template is there for you and suggestions on what needs to be in each section so that you can get to the job of creating and not worrying about formatting. Again, this is, so, oh, sorry, I jumped, getting excited. Um, these are uh, a link to the presentation templates. These are all coming from the marketing department of things you can use um, in your presentations. Very helpful. Um, so that's samples for that. Um, I always find those useful. Um, hi, Runima. Um, and then you come over to here and it is a link to logos and guidelines. And here's an example of the project logos. And here's an example of the best practice badges. What am I forgetting? So this is basically where you would come in to create anything. Again, it's not finished yet. There'll be the templates for blogs, suggestions on how to do blogs, where to do, where how to submit a blog, anything you want to create in um, Hyperledger community, you would come into this inner circle to learn how to create it. So that was just another one of our suggestions. Let me get back over to... Sorry if I'm making any of you dizzy. I jumped again because I'm so excited. Okay, so now the rest of our recommendations, that's the content hub. Um, and then we also, if you remember, uh, Jan Luca did the FAQ AI chatbot. Uh, we actually want to create a lab for that. So I'm going to go up to the library lab section. So this up here is if you're Thinking of creating a lab, how would you go about doing that? So here's a link to the uh, repository you would need to fork and instructions on how to fill that out. Uh, there'll be checklists for you every step of the way. You can click here to learn how to propose a lab. Step one, um, fork this repository. So it walks you through it. We are proposing um, a lab a creation of a lab, which we're going to be getting. Oh, Jan Luca is here, excellent. Um, for the new um, lab that Jan Luca proposed, um, which is laid out here in this section. So, if you wanted to see about the AI lab, or if you wanted to join us, pioneers are wanted for this one because it's just starting. Um, our first meeting is going to be November sixth. Um, during the TOC uh, Documentation Task Force. So if you want to help us create a lab for this uh, improvement, future improvements on the demo that Jan Luca showed us, please show up for that. Um, just to wrap up the tour of the library, um, because again, we want a task force for AI tools um, is another one of our recommendations and a task force for updating the metaverse and keeping the metaverse library um, going so that it is available um, to show you a little bit more about what a metaverse space um, offers. Back here is the maintainer's lounge. So here are your checklists if you're a maintainer on how to get um, out of incubation status. We also have your life cycle here. Um, here's an example of when a maintainer's dashboard, if you're a maintainer, you can come up to the couch, you can type in your username, and your dashboard would show up again with all of the relevant badging, user documentation, profile cards, and statuses for your um, representations would all be um, proliferated. Pro uh, I'm looking for a word I'm not going to find, but I'll be put there uh, for you to access. And then also I intended this space to be for maintainers to hang out. So, if, you know, after the meeting, the maintainers want to talk about um, Git book or make the docs. Let's hear your experiences before we, you know, vote on which one or, or actually just have, it's not going to be a vote, it's going to be more recommendation to the community as to which one you should use. Again, I'm going to have a graph as to what the community is using now. I was almost finished with it. Um, and that will be on the wall over here. Um, and then we can just set up a time to meet here and chat about um, what the maintainers uh, feel the best way to represent user guides for the different personas would be. So that's the maintainer's lounge and the lab uh, lab incubator space. 
Um, and then down here around the outside, we have all the different project pages. You'll have a quick guide uh, AI created on how to install each one of the projects, uh, latest um, information. Um, and again, each product can maintain this uh, learning station for their product. Um, and then if you have your best practice badge, it would be displayed on the table. Again, each project would have that same um, space to explore. Um, again, here's the directory. So around the outside here, we have the Hyperledger staff and we already saw it around the outside here. We had the presentation from last week. If you wanted to grab any of those links and for those coming into the space, we want to be able for end users or contributors to know exactly where to go. So for end users, usually they are looking at uh, consortium based solutions. So we put the special interest groups here so that each of the special interest groups have a description of what they're doing and a link to their wiki page so that you can join the group um, and they go all the way around. So each one has a spot with their information um, so that if you wanted to join or learn about them, you could do that. And then wrapping around the other side, we have for contributors um, looking to get involved. So how to do a best first issue, how to get obtain a Linux Foundation ID, an overview. This is the white paper um, so they can understand better what the whole Hyperledger Foundation is about. Here is um, a video on configuring your GitHub and your first pull request. Um, this is uh, contributing how to contribute video to Hyperledger projects. Um, and then in here, we have meet the staff. So then there's some Hyperledger meet the staff so that you can uh, reach out if you need to discuss anything with some of the staff members. So that's basically inside the library, um, but we do have, and if everybody wants to join me over at the boat real quick, um, let's see if anybody else tapped themselves. Uh, I don't see any new flags. Um, so over here, and I'm gonna hit my shift key so I can run. Again, this is based on Unity. Um, I am a Unity educator. So if you have any questions on the product this is based on, please do not hesitate to ask me. Um, and again, this template is editable. I could add, add things to it using that Unity software. Um, so this is what I call the meetup boat. So for the meetups, uh, this gives information on where meetups are, where they are located, how many groups we have, and then again, I can put more screens up here, but if you come up here, you can click here and watch. Uh, if you click, I don't know if my computer is gonna do this for me. I don't think so. <laughs> you can watch the latest record. I'm not gonna ask it to, cause it might <laughs> fry everything else. But in this um, marquee, um, this media slot, then that YouTube video, um, whether it's a recording would play or a live video would be displayed um, there. So the meetups could all hang out here on the boat and watch the meetup uh, recording or watch the live presentation. Um, and then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is when we're all done with all this wonderful work, it's time to have some fun in the metaverse. So I set up a racetrack for us. And this weekend, again, I'm just teasing the racetrack isn't operable yet. Um, I haven't uh, put the gaming stuff in, but it's, it, it has functionality. I just haven't configured it yet. So for the racetrack, Fabric versus Firefly on Friday, Besu versus Cactus, and then the winners of those will play in a tournament. And in here is our little racetrack where we have our little race cars that we can put our names on and race around the track. So put our, oh, Hydrocore, didn't mean to run into you there. Um, and those, it, it does have functionality. It does work. I just haven't programmed it right. Um, again, and you can put your uh, sponsors' names. I can put the members' names up around the track. Um, so that's just a little fun for us. Um, hopefully, this gave you an idea of what we envision a space to store all of this wonderful information we're gathering in a logical way in a directory so that people can find it and access it whenever they want. Um, so that is the demo um, with our two recommendations or three recommendations for 
uh, four, if you count the library itself, um, a task force for um, AI tools in the community, a task force to maintain the library, and also a lab for that frequently asked questions of Jan Luca um, that he proposed. So that's it for us. If anybody has any questions, I'll be willing to answer them. Or, or actually, and this is not my work, this is our work, the, the mentees, Gianluca, Arunima, Trapur, uh, just stepped up uh, Kajal and did an amazing, amazing job. So kudos to you. And I think that Tracy either has a question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, so these, Items that are on the walls, are they links to existing web pages or are they kind of hard coded into the environment? Um, they are links to existing web pages or can be hard coded in. You can put a regular link um, to an external um, URL. You can do um, a web link, which if it's like a YouTube video would play in the marquee. Okay, I'm thinking about, you know, with the documentation being in GitHub, is there a way to link to those pages directly? Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. You can link to any page. So if right. you, like when we, um, let me see if I can do this real quick. So for instance, when we were up in the labs, running backwards for some reason and you click this oh there it goes uh, in a separate web in a separate browser that would load and again I'm asking my computer to do a whole lot here with zoom and agora <laughs> <laughs> but in that white box that you see should be loading that GitHub repository. Okay, great. And again, it, it's usually a lot faster. It's just my computer. So I apologize. Ah, it's not responding. Shocking. But it would, if my computer wasn't doing so much, it would, uh, eventually it will load in there. And again, this is like for e-commerce. We do a lot of um, NFT um, art shows and you can click right on the artwork and buy it in OpenSea. So that's really handy for um, metaverse e-commerce. So again, we're gonna keep working on making some formal recommendations to the TOC. Um, Tripur, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, hi, Bobby. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I am saying that we are forgetting one more slide that uh, we discussed upon for the recommendations. Which one? The ETH India one. Oh, darn it. You're right, ETH India. Um, yeah, so we also have a recommendation, um, and I forgot to put the slide up, um, for ETH India. Um, I'm going to send out something in discord to let everybody know but one of our recommendation is outreach and our first outreach is we really really want to display this stuff at that um eth india event um i don't have the information handy um but during the rest of the meeting i will find it and put a link for it um, into the chat uh i can share the screen if you want that would be wonderful so yeah this is what we are talking about. Uh, this is one of the biggest event that is happening in India. And it is happening in Bangalore from 8th to 10th of December, 2023. And it will be the world's biggest Ethereum hackathon. And uh, ETH Global uh, organizes this every, uh, like keeps on organizing in every month in different uh, cities, countries. Like uh, last time it happened in ETH, uh, Paris and then multiple uh, events are going on in this. So yeah, we wanted to uh, ask TOC members to support us and uh, let us be a part of ETH India event and so that we can represent uh, Hyperledger and our projects there. And if uh, allowed, then we can encourage many good Ethereum-based projects to 
apply for ethereum uh, like apply for hyperledger labs so that more projects can be incubated and reach to their graduation so yeah this is what we had in mind thank you any more questions tracy's got another one or is your hand still up no i have another one um so last week we were talking about make the docs versus get books and there was some misinformation about make the docs in the recommendations. And so um, I know I had commented last week in the TOC chat, but I, I think that it would be worthwhile to speak further about that. Um, I'm not convinced Git books is the right option. Um, I, I don't know if there's a cost that's associated with Git books. Uh, I don't know a, a whole lot about Git books. And so but I, I do know that there was some incorrect information about make the docs in the comparison. So I uh, wanted to just bring that up as a point for us to work on in the future with some some additional information there. Yeah, and I know Rai had a comment too. Um, again, that's up in the maintainer's lounge. That's why we set up a whole section for that discussion because we know that, that a lot more needs to be talked about, that, that um, a lot of the projects use make the docs um, and like it, um, and there's no reason for them to change if they they have used that. We just thought that the Git book solution was easy and something to just you know look at seriously because um, I don't believe there. Um, and I guess uh, Tripur or Kajal could correct me, but I don't believe there's a cost to use that. Um, but I, I'm not sure about that. Uh, um, but again, that's, uh, sorry, yeah. Kababi, to no, go ahead. But yeah there is a cost if we go for the whole organization then there is a cost but if you want to work as an individual in that then there is a, a limited amount of tools available but yeah we can work with that so that is a problem if we are looking at that you know so basically as a task force what we want to do is we want to still have that conversation now with the maintainers now that we know what's out there and what everyone's using. So we did the analysis on what's being used. And again, we're going to, you know, we showed that a, a while ago, we're going to update that and, you know, put out a survey to the maintainers to see, you know, out of what we've discovered, you know, do you like what you're using? What can we do to help you? Um, and again, we're going to arrange for those calls in the next few weeks. All right, if that's it, um, I'll turn it back over to Tracy for the next part of the meeting. All right, thanks, Bobby, and, and thanks to everybody who's worked on this so far. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting ideas and information that have come out of the, the past week's presentation and today. So I think the next item on our agenda is for Rama to talk about the badging project lifecycle task force. Um, so I know we've been doing a lot of work there, and I'm sure there's some updates that Rama has to provide for us. Thanks, Stacey. You share the screen. All right. Can everybody see it? It's coming up. Can anybody else see it? I haven't been able to see it yet. No, I just see a blank screen. I think your screen share is loading. Let me try. Still nothing, right? Still loading. Okay. Um yeah. Let me just drop the link there. Perhaps Tracy, you can share it. It's, we don't have to navigate too much. I will. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll put it on this call. Tracy, can you try sharing it? Yeah, I will give it a shot here. Uh, share. All right, thanks. Yep. 
Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, actually, before we before I go into that, uh, I just want to ask Rai a question. Uh, there was a meeting on September twenty nine, uh, but I tried to find the recording on YouTube, but couldn't. Uh, can you look that up? And I'm not sure what happened. I'll try to look. Um... Thanks. I'll drop the date on the Discord. Uh, okay. So, uh, thanks to Tracy and Arun for uh, brainstorming with me on this topic. Uh, we had a short uh, update about, I think, almost a month ago. Uh, and uh, since then, we have uh, kind of crystallized uh, the set of badges and what how we associate them with the project lifecycle. And uh, uh, just want to show you the what it is we sort of decided on. Uh, I don't think I should take I'll be I'll need more than ten minutes to cover this, and then we can have some discussions. And uh, if everybody is uh, agreed on the the badges, the criteria, I can make a more complete document uh, draft that lists all the criteria and everything because right now that's the form of links and notes. Um, so what uh, we try to do here, uh, just as a reminder to everyone, is uh, uh, we want to list a set of badges that can be awarded to any Hyperledger -like project and displayed on a website and the GitHub repository. And uh, we also want to list the promotion and demotion criteria for uh, projects that is the uh, moving uh, from one stage to another in the project lifecycle based on whether or not they fulfill the criteria for a badge or if they have uh, slipped up on maintaining uh, the criteria that's needed to, to retain a badge. Um, so the, you can see here there's a section called mandatory badges, the section called optional badges. Uh, mandatory badges are those badges that we uh, be identified as uh, necessary for uh, some kind of uh, project lifecycle decision, either to move to a particular stage or if that uh, badge uh, criteria has, has not been fulfilled recently, then uh, the project will be demoted. Uh, optional badges are those that are somewhat softer. Uh, they are not going to necessarily be used for uh, the, a project lifecycle decision though they may in the future, depending on what the TOC decides. Uh, and uh, uh, those badges, but those badges, uh, if a project possesses them, they indicate something good about the project. Uh, the fact that the project is uh, mature and uh, it's, uh, it's well-maintained and uh, people can have confidence in using them or also uh, they'll feel good about contributing to the project. So those badges are just good to have. Uh, how are these going to be evaluated? Uh, I think at this point, we have generally agreed that the projects are going to be, uh, I mean, the badges are going to be uh, evaluated and re-evaluated at the, at the annual review cycle. Though I think uh, we also kind of agreed that uh, if uh, project maintainers ask for a particular badge, then uh, the TOC could uh, consider that in the next TOC meeting and, and make decisions. Uh, so, yep, that's the high-level overview. And, uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Tracy, for navigating down here. I tried to uh, associate the... I, I just made a list of all the badges that were in the above list and attached them to... These are just the mandatory badges and attached them to the different project uh, lifecycle stages. So, if a project has to... If a pro project proposal has to be accepted, it needs to pass the... The legal criteria, that is, uh, the code needs to be uh, Apache 2 certified uh, and carry the appropriate license declarations. Uh, it needs to be decentralized uh, to some extent. That is, it needs to have at least uh, two independent organizations contributing maintenance to the project. And also, uh, those maintainers, should, the, the contributions should not be heavily skewed, which is somewhat more of a subjective decision, but at least the, the count is something that we can verify uh, in a straightforward way. Uh, um, uh, the, the badge, uh, the top level 
Kaspersky is sort of a badge indicating that the project is a top level badge, uh, is, a, is a top level project that is a full hyperledger project versus a lab project. So yeah, if you're uh, if you're qualified for a uh, uh, full a full hyperledger project, you'll get a top level badge, and if you're a lab, you'll get a lab badge. That that's sort of just uh, it's sort of basic criteria, but uh, we we thought it would be good to have. Uh, security uh, refers to the project meeting the, the basic uh, security uh, guidelines uh, requirements. That is uh, attaching the security template, making sure that there is there are security spots and so on. Uh, this is uh, following the criteria laid down by the security uh, task force. Uh, so that's the proposal stage. Uh, if you have to move to the incubation stage, there are a few more criteria you'll have to fulfill. Uh, you need some kind of uh, testing framework, and uh, this is uh, and some uh, and some amount of uh, documentation. It's marked as POF because uh, we couldn't really we, we thought that uh, we could give a pass to projects that were kind of mature in code, but not necessarily completely fulfilling all the testing documentation criteria as uh, as we have uh, defined. Um, but uh, that, that at least something is necessary for a project to move from proposal to incubation stage. Uh, further, it needs to have uh, uh, some CICD in place and also structure. Structure just refers to the uh, typical, the minimal hyperledger project structure that uh, all hyperledger projects are supposed to follow. That is, uh, it needs to have uh, uh, particular uh, files like maintainer.md, security.md, and uh, maybe uh, folders like uh, for, for documentation, for specifications, uh, RFCs, and uh, uh, yeah, of course, uh, source code and, and others. Um, so as long as the project uh, has uh, the minimum list of uh, files and folders that a hyperledger project needs to have, then it will get, get a structured badge. Uh, if you go down to graduated, you see there are more criteria uh, and uh, I think everybody's kind of familiar with, the, with these criteria uh, since we had a couple of graduation applications just about a month ago. Uh, this also includes uh, beyond uh, what criteria are required for incubation. Uh, it includes, uh, it requires an openness test, best practices uh, badge uh, with a passing grade. And it also needs to have uh, uh, at least one demonstrated use, demonstrated production use. Uh, and uh, needs to have at least three uh, or more, at least three organizations that are maintaining uh, the project. That's the decentralization badge. Uh, so those are marked in green because these these are badges that uh, qualify project for promotion. Now the uh, the boxes in red indicate when a project will be uh, maybe demoted. So uh, the if you can see, I added. Uh, an arrow from graduated to incubation. Uh, that are, you won't find that arrow in the official diagram. I just added it here because we, when we were discussing this in the task force meeting, we uh, we, we thought we, uh, based on particular non fulfillment of criteria, graduate product project could be demoted to incubation rather than going to dormant or duplicated or UL. Uh, so uh, a graduate project can go in incubation if, let's say, it's a number of organizations that are maintaining it drops from. Uh, to less than three, uh, and if it is, if, if the project maintainers are either not are not following the release guidelines or uh, they are not, uh, the, the testing is not uh, uh, adequate to maintain, uh, maybe they've slipped up. Again, these are uh, criteria that uh, have to be uh, manually inspected, and uh, we expect that this will be done during the annual uh, review cycle. Uh, and uh, if if a uh, if project is deemed not to Pass some of these uh, uh, qualifications for those particular badges, then we will demote it from graduated to incubation. Uh, a project can go from graduated to dormant if, uh, for somewhat more specific reasons, uh, if the releases are uh, very infrequent, let's say a project has not uh, put out a release in over a year, maybe it's not being actively maintained, uh, the uh, security uh, uh, criteria or the security box. Uh, are also maybe not responsive, or uh, if, the, if the project is not actively fixing security bugs that are filed against it, uh, and if uh, there have been no new production usages uh, demonstrated over a, a particular period of time. Uh, 
um, the project can uh, for deprecation you will just one criteria identified is uh, if it if the project is not if a graduate project is not following the state security guidelines then it should be first moved to deprecated and if it still continues not to follow the guidelines then it will move to end apply um, so yeah that kind of covers what we uh, what we felt would would uh, would be uh, with minimal set of badges and the criteria required for uh, upgrade or, or downgrade of projects. And yeah, I'll stop there and take any questions. Any reactions? Looks like everybody said this. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I mean, please, uh, this is fair amount of information. Just, uh, you know, review this at leisure, uh, drop comments on the, on the page, and uh, you know, we can have a chat. We can also have a follow-up discussion in a video you see. Does anybody like it? Anybody hate it? No reaction is, it's hard to, to know whether or not uh, people have a feeling here. Uh, I, I like it. I think it makes good sense. I think, yeah, having, having the definitions, the, the underlying components that indicate, you know, what incubation means, what graduated means is, is good and, and being able to display it and, and badge it is a good idea. It would be good to see on the different pages. Thanks, Stephen. Let's see a thumbs up from Marcus. I saw a celebrate or something from Bobby. So this looks like good reactions. Any any like oh my gosh, what are we doing? Sort of reactions that people are having. I think uh, Tracy, if nobody else has any comments, maybe uh, informalize this into a better looking document with comprehensive list. And uh, I suppose then we put it up for adoption. Yep, I think that would be the next steps. All right. Uh, yeah, just give me one more cycle and I'll, I'll make such a document. Okay, that's fine. No, no worries, Rama. Um, all right. If there's no other further comments or uh, questions on what we have here, definitely have a look at, at this. Uh, if there are comments, specific things that you think uh, weren't covered appropriately, uh, there is a bunch of discussion down here about what each of these means, um, you know, kind of the, the penalty for noncompliance, any notes that Rama took during the um, discussions that we had um, please do do have a look and and see if there's anything that uh, jumps out as you, at you as uh, oh that's not how I understood this to be um, and just leave a comment and uh, the task force can take that forward. Um, if there's uh, no other questions though on this, uh, are there any other topics that anybody would like to cover today? All right, uh, so if there's not, then I think that the next discussion that we have for task forces would be the continuous integration. I'll ping Peter and let him know that he would be next up on the agenda. And then obviously if there's anything else that comes up, definitely let me know for the agenda. We can add that for next week. Um, and I guess with that, if there's nothing else, I will put in 
Uh, another reminder that if you haven't put in your um, your nomination and you wish to run for the TOC next next year, or yeah, I guess next year, then uh, please do add your nomination before end of day on the 31st, since we won't be meeting before that. And uh, we will, yeah, I guess close today's meeting and talk to you all again next week.